Today's session will be about writing and aggregation. Um, and let's get started with taking over the basic idea. So you may know this Elastic Contributor Router program, and you see that there's basically a list of users with a score. And the score is calculated of a list of contributions. It's basically summed up. And what we want to display is the name of the user and the score sorted by the score and not by the username. And we will just show you that this is not as straightforward as it seems by taking a look at our data set. And the data set looks like this. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And if you look closely, you see that there are basically three fields, the timestamp of that score, the score, the email's name. So it's four fields. And the only unique part here where we have to basically sum things up on top of is the email address. The user can potentially change their name, like Peter Parker and Peter middle name Parker, refers to the same email address in our data set. But we still want to make sure we only aggregate by the email and not by the name. Yet, at the end, we really would like to display the name of the user. So let's see how we can get there. Now let's make sure we delete the data first, then we index. So we know we only have this data set in there. We could now run a count on our data set, see that in total we have eight documents. So the basic idea for our data set would be that we um, search for every score within the month of February, so last month, because that is the finished one. So when we execute the search, we see we get back all 10 documents. Well, we can also see that there are some documents that probably should not be part of the result set, like this one and this one. So the first step that we have to take is to make sure that we write a query that filters based on the date. We can do that using a range filter. So we would like to have a full query with a filter clause so it's catchable. Um, and there would be a range query on our timestamp field. We want to make sure it's greater than 2021-0201. And it's probably lower than 2021-0301. So once we run this query, we can see we already excluded a few documents, and we only get back the right document. This is always the first step when you're going to write an aggregation. You really would like to make sure that you only aggregate the documents for that you're interested in. So what would be the next step? The next step is basically coming up with an aggregation. A potential candidate for this would be um, the username, because this is what we want to display at the end. But as you can also see here, uh, if we use the name field, we would end up with more buckets than we actually expect just because um, the name is different. So let's come up with a by email example here and use the uh, email.keyword field. And of course, we are no more interested in single hits. From now on, we only aggregate, so we can set the size to zero. This first means that we don't display the hits in the hits array. It also means it's a little bit faster because there's no need to execute the fetch phase. So we can see here, OK, this looks good. We can now count and group by email address. And our next step will probably be to aggregate by, or to sum certain things up uh, by the score. So now we want to sum up the score. So we could talk, call this total, have some aggregation, and the field would be the score field. If we do this, we can see over here that we end up with the sum of all of those scores. And we also see that our sorting is not what we expect it to be, right? We probably would like to sort by the complete sum uh, first. So this means we have to change the, score, uh, the sorting for the buckets. Um, this would work, let me think. It's not sort, it's called order. So the order here would be the total value. And we want to sort descending. 
So now we basically have the basic structure of our aggregation. Uh, you see here, the one with 5.0 is the one that it scores highest. However, there's still one requirement that we have to properly finish on, and that would be like we're chewing back the name of our users, right? We still only have the emails, and we don't want to expose the emails on our website. So we now have to do the last step of mapping this from an email to a name. So what and how could we do that? One potential approach to solve this would be to go with a top hits aggregation. So within this, we can go by or top hits. We have another aggregation that we name by name. We can have this as a top hits aggregation. We only need the single top hit over here. Um, and now we could run this. As you can see, nesting continues of our aggregations. We see here Peter at example org, and we see the name Peter Parker here. So in order to reduce the amount of data that gets sent, uh, I think we have the possibility to reduce the uh, fields that are being returned because we are only interested in the name field here. So we could use a feature called source include that you can also use for any regular search. And with that, we end only up with the, with the name. And then we could extract the name from the sub aggregation and basically go from there. So while this works, um, I thought like using top hits, using source excludes, that might be a little bit too much. Can we basically improve this? And it turns out we can. And one potential solution to this is instead of going with top hits, we could go with terms aggregation, um, filtering on the name of the keyword field. Again, has a size of one. But this doesn't guarantee us necessarily that the the latest entry, so the latest name, would be the one that actually gets used. If we scroll up to our data set, we see that this is from the 1st of February, and this is from the last of February. And you probably would always like to display the most recent name of our user. So in order to support this, we can again add another aggregation, which we can name uh, latest. And that would be a max aggregation on the timestamp field. And just like with our first aggregation, we could add an ordering to latest.value and again have it descending. So with this aggregation, which now spans more than a screen, uh, we can take another look and see that we have Peter X example as the first bucket, who has the highest score and also contains two documents, but that's not super important. Um, and within that, there's another single bucket for the most recently used name, which in this example would be Peter Parker. So we can also take another look at the other at example data set, which also has its most recent data on the last day of February, and it's someone other, and this is also the user that is being returned. So using this, we can basically come up with the scoreboard that you see over here in the contributor program, um, just with a couple of decent aggregations. And we do not have to write a second query or anything like that. We can everything or everything can be done within a single aggregation. So that's that. Um, I only showed a few aggregations over here. You can see uh, we have those um, by email, the terms aggregation. We have an X, uh, we have a sum aggregation up here, we have another terms aggregation, and we have a max aggregation. So we only have three different types of aggregations in here. If you take a look at the Elasticsearch documentation, nowadays there are much more aggregations. There are the three different types, like metric, bucket, and pipeline. And if you take a look at the docs, you can see that the bucket aggregations nowadays are, I think it's, it's more than 20. Uh, the metric aggregations, which do like some calculation, the number-based calculation within the documents that fall into a certain bucket, have also been extended throughout the 7x series. And even the pipeline aggregations, which allows you to aggregate on top of aggregation results if you want, 
and have also been continuously added and increased.